I'm here at the provincial office of the Church of the Province of Myanmar. I've come with a group from Melbourne at the invitation of Archbishop Stephen, the Archbishop of Myanmar, so that we can build on the relationships that we've held over many years. Many people in Melbourne will know that there are a lot of Karen worshippers at Werribee and Karayo and other places. These people have come from this country and ended up on the border camps as refugees and then been repatriated to Australia. There's much change happening in Myanmar, Burma at the present time. And the church is engaged in how it can respond to all of the opportunities. And uh, we're here to understand some of those opportunities, some of those challenges, and how it is that people like us in Melbourne can be partners with the church in Myanmar as it seeks to make its contribution to uh, the nation building that's happening here in, in this place. The church in Myanmar has had a, a very long history. It was founded by uh, British chaplains, because you may know that Burma was part of British India back in the early part of the 19th century. Uh, after independence, and especially in 1962, the church had many of its institutions taken away from it. The institutions were generally nationalized, so the church has lost its schools, has lost its hospitals. And since then, through the, uh, the process of some of the, the wars with um, the minority ethnic groups who were resisting the, uh, the government's centralizing tendencies, it's lost a lot of its leadership because many of those leaders have gone to the, the Thai border in the refugee camps or they've gone overseas to the US or to Australia and been repatriated. It's estimated there's about 300,000 uh, refugees from Myanmar living in Thailand on those border camps. So the church has now at this time of greater openness many opportunities that it would like to express but it, but it also feels that it doesn't have much of the way of resources to address that. Some of the places we've seen, uh, wonderful work, grassroots work, Bible colleges up in Tongu, preschools, uh, helping young people uh, develop their own literacy skills. And for Australians, uh, the amazing thing to see three-year-olds doing quite formal education, learning handwriting and other kinds of things that seem to be very different to how uh, Australian three-year-olds spend their time in preschool. So. We're halfway through our trip at this time. We're uh, about to go in a few days' time to uh, Pa'an, which is close to the Thai border. And we're engaged at the moment in a communications workshop where people have come in from the, the different dioceses and the different sections of the provincial office and learning about some skills that might enhance their communication within this society. Just in terms of being in Yangon, people have told us that uh, in the last nine months the number of cars have doubled that are on the road. Uh, some of the people we've met who are Australians who've lived here and in Southeast Asia say that Yangon is one of the most expensive places to live in Southeast Asia, certainly much more expensive to live than in Chiang Mai or Bangkok in Thailand. So um, those cost structures make it difficult for the church. The history of the church is, uh, is something that the leaders are very conscious of. And we're here to find those ways that we can have some solidarity with the church. And, and people are so eager to know that we're praying for them, that we're informed and concerned about their situation and that we hold in our hearts their situation, their leaders. Because um, the changes that have happened here haven't come about as part of a, a groundswell of uh, a people movement. It's come about as some of the, the leaders in the, in the military dictatorship have decided to resolve to make the country more open. So people are still waiting to see, is this uh, something that will be turned around and changed in the same way as it happened? And, and they look to their leaders to give them some assurance about the sincerity of these things. And so the, the leaders, you can imagine, are under a situation of great pressure at this time as um, they give guidance to the, to the members of their church, many of whom are in rural areas and many of whom are in former conflict areas. So I urge you to join with me in praying for the church in Myanmar. Let's all seek to be better informed about its needs. And let's hold before God those who are the leaders of this church in the complex situations they find, that they can respond appropriately to all of both the opportunities and challenges that face them at this critical time in the development of this country.